I would like to start by giving you a few facts about the human brain. They say that one human brain can store as much information as that stored on the entire internet. The human brain is the CPU of the internet of the human body, another type of internet. It's made of 37 trillion users. The users of this internet are the biological cells of which the human body is made. To compare, the actual internet is made of only 3 billion users. So the human internet is orders of magnitude larger. And the brain makes sure that the communication between the cells, the users of the human internet, is flawless throughout the entire lifespan of a human being. So you can see what a powerful computing machine the brain is. If for some reason the communication between cells in the internet of the human body fails, here and there, that's when we get diseases such as cancer, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and other devastating diseases. Right now, in a couple of sentences, I define for you a new emerging science and technology field known as technobiology. It's different from biotechnology, the traditional approach in medical science. According to biotechnology, diseases are treated at a relatively local level of cells and tissues. With technobiology, diseases are treated not only at that local level, but also at the level of the entire internet of the human body. When we treat cells and tissues locally, we also have to make sure we recover the communication between these treated cells and the entire internet. And to make sure cancers and other diseases don't come back, don't relapse, it's vital to implement this approach, technobiology. And this is my field. My expertise is in the fields of physics and electrical and computer engineering. Until about a decade ago, together with my team of talented graduate students, I focused on using principles of quantum physics to build much better and faster computers. We were pretty good in that. Some of the technologies we developed are used today in industry. However, 10 years ago, our focus changed dramatically from building better computers to engineering better medicines. And that happened when we, uh, when we were visited by my old friend, a physician who happened to love science. We were showing him how we could use quantum physics to wirelessly control molecules, make them self-assemble into perfect periodic shapes. He was amazed and he said, why don't you use, if you uh, experts in such powerful approach, why don't you use this quantum physics to cure cancer instead of building better computers? Seems like a much more rewarding and noble goal. To me, it was an eye-opener. Soon after the, the, that visit, uh, we were relocating our lab of electrical and computer engineering in the middle of the recently established medical school at Florida International University in Miami, Florida. That move was very important to us. We immediately got a chance to work side by side with uh, physicians, medical researchers. We could participate in and witness heart and brain surgeries every day. And we actually could experience real medical problems firsthand. That was very important to us. I think that immediately distinguished us from all the other similar centers, nanomedicine centers, in the country and across the globe. Uh, all those other centers, they focus on the traditional biotechnology approach to treat diseases. We could develop that new angle, technobiology. Now I'll go back to the problem to the challenge of technobiology. So the technobiology approach is driven by the brain. To be able to use it to cure, to cure cancer, Alzheimer's, and so on, we have to figure out how the brain works. That, that was a serious challenge. The brain is made of approximately 80 billion neurons. So you can say 80 billion parts. And to understand how it works, you know, as kids, we all try to understand how the toys work, and we reverse engineered it by taking it apart. 
of course, you cannot do it to the brain. And our brain is, is, is made of so many parts, 80 billion neurons. So we had to figure out how we can understand how the new neurons communicate with each other. That was a serious challenge because it's well known that communication between neurons and the other cells in the internet of the human body is driven by electric signals. There are electric signals coming in and out uh, from the, uh, each neuron. And there is no way to be able to see it in real time, to understand what actually happens in the brain. So the only way you can do it by physically attaching contacts to all the 80 billion neurons in the brain. Of course, you're not going to have 80 billion wires coming from the brain. The brain is not going to work, right? So we had to figure out how to do it wirelessly. That was very important to us. Our eureka moment happened when uh, we were working on our first task in the new medical setting. We had to figure out how to deliver drugs inside so-called multi-drug resistant cancer cells. Multi-drug resistance is the property uh, of uh, cells to resist drugs. Right? That, that's uh, designed by nature. That's the reason why chemotherapy becomes quite ineffective after being used a few times. And that's the reason why biotechnology approach, which relies on finding certain antibodies which can target certain biomarkers specific to a disease, doesn't work well with these multidrug resistant cells. So our claim was technobiology is more fundamental. Technobiology deals with laws of physics which underlie the principles of biology. So, and we got a chance to test it. So in this experiment, what we see is, uh, it's, it's a, what we, we did, we used the Petri dish, we put the media with this particular cell lines, the multi-drug resistant cancer cell lines in the Petri dish, and we sprinkled, sprinkled uh, special nanoparticles in the media. These nanoparticles are very special, I'll talk about them in a second. I'll give you a heads up. What they give us a chance to control electric fields wirelessly. That's very important because it's well known that different cell lines have different electric properties. You can actually distinguish cancer cells from no normal cells look looking at their electric pro properties. And the biotechnology approach doesn't really take advantage of it. So what we did, we used those nanoparticles to apply wirelessly special electric fields which perfectly match the properties of the cell lines. And what you see right now in the images, in the red circle, you see that dish with the cells before we applied wireless to the fields. And in the white circle, you see the same exactly uh, Petri dish with the same exact cells after we applied the fields matched to the property of the cells. And the experiment was designed so that you actually see cells only when the nanoparticles are inside the cells. Nanoparticles were conjugated with a fluorescent agent, which is activated when it's inside the cell. And you can clearly see in, in the red circle, uh, those little uh, uh, green uh, circles there, those are cells. You immediately see cells. And the bright spots inside each, uh, cells, inside each cell is, is a nucleus, cell nucleus. So we were confident, yeah, the approach worked. We could do something with, uh, which could not be done with traditional biotechnology approach, using antibodies and certain biomarkers and so on. So we were excited. And I'll tell you what our, what's so special about this approach. Like any other nanoparticles, and nanoparticles are used today in medicine everywhere. This, they are very small, they're extremely small. The size uh, varies from approximately 10 nanometers to over 50 nanometers. And we tailor the size depending on the disease we want to treat. Cancer, Alzheimer's, and others. So 10 nanometer nanoparticle is about 5,000 times smaller than the thickness of the average human hair. So uh, this picture, by the way, what you see that red white spot uh, on the human hair is not to scale. You know, 5,000 times is much smaller than that. But what's special about the nanoparticles we used is they are called magneto-electron nanoparticles. Magneto-electric uh, property allows uh, us uh, to communicate with the cells wirelessly. 
Unlike any other nanoparticles, these particles can sense two different fields, electric and magnetic at the same time. Only recently, the materials like this were invented, and um, we, we were the first group who implemented this in medical applications. So what it means, these nanoparticles can sense electric fields, and electric fields, as you know, they're generated by electric charges. And at the same uh, electric fields are important because the electric fields is the language which cells use to communicate with each other. And at the same time, they sense magnetic fields. And magnetic fields is the language which can be used to, to, by us. The magnetic fields uh, are known not to interfere with the complex electric circuitry of the brain. So they can be used for perfect wireless control. By speaking these two languages at the same time, these particles act as messengers, which can translate for us the language, intrinsic language of the cells, of the neurons, and allow us to see what actually happens with electric signals at the level of each neuron. And we're talking about 80 billion neurons here, because particles are so small and so many of them. And we can see them on the computer, you know, on the screen of our computer. And we can control them, we can do them, we can make them do anything we want. So, our first test were uh, on animals, mice, to treat actual diseases. The first test was Parkinson's disease. In mice with Parkinson's disease, we try, we, what we did, we used these particles to recover electric signals in the brain, wirelessly. And we were very successful uh, doing this. Uh, again, these particles are extremely small. They are made of materials which are already approved by Federal Drug Administration. They are very safe. And because they provide us that in unprecedented wireless control, we can bring them in and out of the body whenever we want. So uh, in this case, uh, what we do, we administrate the nanoparticle intravenously. So we give a painless, one painless shot an hour before the treatment. The shot is similar to the typical flu shot we all use here and there. And when the particles get in the blood system, we can see them on the screen of our computer. We know where, where they are. We can wirelessly make them go any way we want. We can see the circuit in the brain. We can zoom it in with the precision of one neuron, if necessary. And we can repair the circuit if, if required. And that's exactly what we did. And when the treatment is done, in half an hour or so, we bring them back to the blood system, and from which it naturally gets cleared. Optionally, you can actually uh, use administered particles uh, orally. You can mix them in a glass of water, drink it one hour before the treatment, and the same thing happens. We apply this uh, technology to treat other diseases as well, including cancers, very successfully. We published a number of papers, scientific articles on this work, and we were very happy when researchers from all over the world contacted us and they wanted to test them in, uh, for different diseases. Uh, remember, this approach is more fundamental than biotechnology approach, so it can be used to any disease. We know we just scratched the surface. Currently, we work with many researchers in this country and worldwide to extend it to different cancers, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, ALS, and other diseases. And every day, we're getting closer to the ultimate goal to use it on people. And we hope within a couple of years we can do that and help the society get rid of these devastating diseases. Thank you.